my channel. Uh, I hope this setup is looking okay. I am using two tripods today and my second tripod, um, one of the uh, legs wouldn't tighten so it kept kind of sinking down so I've got it kind of propped up on um, on my drafting table here so that's why the angle is a little bit weird but uh, it was the only thing that would work so I hope it looks okay. Um, anyway, today is going to be the second installment in my colored pencil series. And in the last one, we covered lay down, which is just like a broad term to mean like how the pencil gets onto the page and the different ways to put the pencil on the paper and making marks and pressure and uh, all of that. So um, it, it is a pretty basic thing, but um, I think it's something that I had to work with quite a bit when I first started doing colored pencil work so um, yeah there's some good information in there and I will link it below in the description box and probably put it on the screen as well if you want to go take a look at that first although that being said there isn't really a, a specific order that you have to view these in so um, anyway today's video is going to be about values which is uh, light and dark colors and blending Okay, so first things first, values. Now, values, as I mentioned, uh, value, as I mentioned, is a term that uh, essentially refers to the darkness or lightness of something. So depending on what kind of media you're working in, it's pretty common to either work dark to light or light to dark. So like for a lot of watercolor artists, they'll work light to dark. Um, some might do it the other way too. Uh, and then vice versa with oils. A lot of oil painters will work dark to light. Um, although you will still find some that will do it the opposite way. But um, generally, you'll start out kind of at one end of the spectrum or the other. And uh, with colored pencils, you do, or at least for me, I find that's best to do neither of those, but just kind of start in the middle. And um, I am using for example today, um, just I really like pink, so I picked out some kind of pinks and peaches. Um, and I am uh, just organizing those a little bit by value, which I'm realizing I should have done before I started, uh, before I started the video. But uh, anyway, here I go. The reason it's important to start with mid-tones for colored pencils is that with other media, With other media, uh, the amount of layering you can do is essentially endless as long as you wait long enough for dry time. So if you realize, oh, something I put down is way too dark, I actually need it to be lighter, you can make that mistake a lot <laughs> before it will come back to bite you. And vice versa, um, if you realize you made something too light, you can add darkness on top. Um, some limitations with that around watercolor, obviously, but um, with colored pencils, you really are limited in the number of times you can put them on the page. So there will be a point when you have actually filled up that paper uh, or whatever substrate you're working on. You've actually filled it up with so much of the, um, the pigment and the binder from the colored pencil that you're not gonna be able to get any more down. So uh, I find that it's better to have a more cautious approach and kind of start out in the middle and edge your way to, to either end, to the darkness and the, the lightness end of the spectrum. So for mid-tones, I would mean something like in this range, although this is pretty light. If, if we were working with this palette, the mid-tones would be like here, the lights would be here, and the darker ones would be here, although this could kind of be a mid-tone too. So typically if I'm starting out, um, I would pick one of the lighter ends of the mid-tone just to kind of try to lay that down first. And then work in the darker ends of the mid-tone. And I am being very sloppy with my marks right now. I'm not like paying any attention to them and this is not how I would do it if I were actually working on a piece. I'd be much tidier, but. Um, and then the lighter range and then I tend to do the, the super dark things last of all. Now again, this is just the method that works for me and it really does vary a lot. You'll find people that really like putting the super dark things down initially. Um, and I think if you have a really strong grasp of values and color and you just feel really confident in it and you wanna put your darks down really heavy right away, that's great, you can do that. <laughs> But what happens is if you fill up 
all of the tooth of the paper, you're going to reach a point where you really can't add any more. And if you want to lighten it, even with like a mid-tone, it's going to be hard to actually get anything to, to go on top of it. So essentially, um, so that's next to it, it's not on top, but essentially you end up kind of stuck with a really, really dark color. And the same is true with the lights. If you were to put all of the highlights down really heavy first out of, uh, right out of the gate, and then you decide like, oh, actually I really need a little shadow here. That would be a little bit easier to do than, um, than adding the highlight on top of the dark but you can kind of see how it looks milky and has a little bit of almost of a chalky look compared to the um, compared to the really dark over here. So basically that's my way of being cautious, kind of starting out in those mid-tones and then working to the really darks and the really lights. So anyway, if you follow that route of laying down the mid-tones and kind of working your way to either end, you're gonna find that it will be easier to layer and it's gonna be easier, especially if you wanna have a pretty heavy application of colored pencils and you still wanna get that like nice smooth gradient, it'll be easier to do as well if you're starting out with the mid-tones. So I hope that makes sense. Um, and I'm gonna jump right into the next thing, which is color. And it's a little bit related because I would say the overall approach that I take is really similar in terms of sort of being cautious with what you put down on the paper uh, because again as with the value um, and putting something down down that's too dark or too light if you put something down that's really the wrong color with colored pencil and you go like really strong right out of the gate and do a heavy application your options for how to deal with that are somewhat limited and um, just because you're going to be limited in how much layering you can do so I um, if I'm working on a subject that I have done a lot of, like pastries, say. I've, I've drawn so many pastries, and I'm pretty familiar with what that color palette is. Um, I have a, I feel like I have a relatively good sense of what colors I'm gonna use in the darks, what's gonna happen in the mid-tones, what's gonna happen in the lights. Um, so I, with something like that, I would probably be more bold and just like put it right down on the paper first time. But if I'm working on something that's new that I haven't done before or that I haven't done a lot of, like, I don't know, I haven't really done many fish. <laughs> so if I was gonna do a painting of a fish, I probably would be a little bit more tentative and I would have, just like I have here, a little test piece of paper where I can um, lay down some swatches of color just to make sure that what I see on the outside of the pencil works with what I see on the paper and works with what I see in the reference. So um, I would basically choose, I've, and I've done a video on this too, I think I will try to put it um, in the description box, but I will choose the colors that I think I need in my palette and then I'll test them out on the paper and kind of come up with a little bit of a, um, yeah, a palette essentially to, to use throughout the piece. So if you are painting, um, let's say you're using, I mean, really any kind of paint, um, you typically will have, you could have a really huge palette, <laughs> but typically if you're building a palette, like say for an oil painting or an acrylic painting, you're gonna have, I don't know, like m a big palette would maybe be like 30 colors, right? Um, and you might even use less than that. For a colored pencil, especially if you're working with like Prismacolor or that has like over 200 colors, and I have all of those, you uh, it's going to be overwhelming to use all of those. And in addition, having all of those colors can actually get you kind of in a bind uh, in terms of muddiness. So muddiness can happen when you are mixing too many, uh, too many different pigments and types of pigments and um, colors that are already blends themselves. So like uh, if you're using a color, let's say cadmium, cadmium red, like, and that's a, uh, that would be a color that you would have for acrylic or for oil. That's the straight up pigment itself. Um, but if you're working in colored pencils, there really aren't, I don't know if any of the colors, I mean, there are some, like there's a cadmium orange and there's ultramarine blue. There are some colors that are, uh, that are pure pigments, but a lot of the colors with colored pencils are mixes. So they're things that already have multiple different pigments in them. And if you get too much of that going on on your piece, there will be muddiness. So um, that's, again, another reason why you want to be careful about, um, about not overdoing it, about not putting down um, 
but not overworking the piece. <laughs> um, so you want to make sure to have somewhat of a sense of where you're going with your color story and have that palette built out so that you can um, be really judicious with what you put on the paper and keep your colors nice and clean and bright. So to sum it all up for color, if you are feeling really confident and you have a good sense of the subject that you're working on and the colors that you're working with, um, yes, absolutely, you can do some mixing on the fly right on your paper. I do that all the time but if it's something that you're not as comfortable with or if you're new to colored pencils uh, I would strongly recommend having a little test palette where you can build your palette and build the colors that you're going to work with and get really confident with um, with the colors that you want to use in your piece you can see in all of my time lapses if you watch them you can see me practicing um, all of the stuff that I'm talking about in this video. So working from mid-tones to dark tones to light tones and um, being careful with the kind of color that I lay down and again sort of working in the middle to the more saturated ends of the spectrum. Um, so if you want to see true examples like in action because all I'm doing right now is like scribbling on a paper and that may not be the most helpful but if you want to see true examples in action just watch my time lapse videos and you will see what it looks like to work from mids to darks to lights. So that is uh, value and color and the thing that uh, kind of relates to both of them and the third point in the video is blending and this is something I get asked about a lot and particularly I get asked about um, I think because it shows up in in a lot of my videos I get asked about Gamsol and um, and about whether I am when I'm blending with water versus when I'm blending with Gamsol this I'm trying to think of how to say really easily if you just watch in a video <laughs> how to tell the difference between when I'm blending with water versus when I'm blending with Gamsol and it I do use different brushes for each typically if I am blending with water I, if I'm blending watercolor pencils with water, I will use a brush that looks like this. And these are stiff, round acrylic brushes. And if I'm blending colored pencils with Gamsol, I will use a filbert uh, brush that looks more like this. And these are watercolor pencils, I believe, or watercolor brushes, I believe. So it's kind of counterintuitive. I use the acrylic brushes to blend with water and I only use water to blend watercolor pencils and I use the watercolor brushes to blend the regular colored pencils with Gamsol. You can blend watercolor pencils with Gamsol but I never do because it's more expensive and it's a chemical and um, yeah there just isn't really any reason to. If I'm going to use watercolor pencils I always will blend them with water. Um, and it is not possible to use water to blend regular colored pencils like Prismacolor softcore pencils or luminance or um, what's the other one that everybody likes? Um, I can't think of it. The Oh, it'll come to me eventually. But um, anyway, if you're using a wax or oil-based pencil, it's not possible to blend it with water. The only option for like a liquid to blend it out with is uh, some kind of a solvent. So I use Gamsol, which is an odorless mineral spirit, and it is it is a chemical. Um, but uh, of the odorless mineral spirits, it's sort of I think from the research I've done, the best of the bunch and the safest, and I use it in really small quantities. If I'm using Gamsol, I just open the container long enough just to get what I need and I'll take most of it off on my brush. Um, whenever you're using an odorless mineral spirit you want to use as little as possible. One because it's the most it makes the most sense economically or using up uh, the least amount of the product possible and then also you're breathing in less of it and uh, it's going to dry much quicker on your page. So I just get a little tiny bit on my brush and just kind of go in small circular strokes to blend it. So what the Gamsol does is the inside the colored pencil you have not just the pigment but you have a binder and that's either wax or oil um, mixed in with some other stuff too probably. Uh, I don't know everything that goes into the core of a colored pencil but um, what the Gamsol does is it breaks up the binder so that you can kind of move the pigment around the same way you would move paint. Um, it's tends to be the choice that I use for blending if I want something to look super smooth if I want it to look kind of more like oil paint I will use Gamsol for blending. Now, one note on using Gamsol you do have to wait for it to dry completely before you can add any additional colored pencil on top 
and it can be tricky with Gamsol to tell if it's dry because if you're, you know, if you're using a watercolor paper um, with water, you can feel that it's wet. And Gamsol, it doesn't feel wet often. Um, also, just to note on safety, if you're going to be using a lot of it, like saturating your whole paper, absolutely you need to be opening windows or um, working somewhere where there's really good ventilation, ideally with some sort of an air filter. And uh, also if it's gonna be all over the substrate, you really should wear gloves too, so that it doesn't get on your hands. Especially if you read the literature on it, you'll see it, it really is the safest of, of all of the odorless mineral spirits. But that being said, I'm just a cautious person and I always would advocate for taking the most cautious approach possible. So um, yeah, if, uh, if you're going to be rubbing your hand up against the surface that has Gamsol on it, on it you should wear gloves um, chemical resistant gloves uh, but to tell whether your gamsol is dry or not um, you can just flip over your paper and you'll see there will be kind of like a little bit of a translucent I hope it is coming through but a little bit of a translucent spot on the paper where the wet gamsol still is so uh, that's how I tell if mine is uh, dry or not and if you are blending an area the size of this, say, and you flip it over and you've got a ton of Gamsol, you can see like a wet area that's much bigger than the area that you are blending, you're definitely using too much Gamsol. So um, when you're using it, it's you're using a mix of, you're using the chemical to break up the binder, but you are still actually manually doing the blending with your brush. So you don't need to add tons of it. You really only need a tiny little bit of it. Um, and if you're using too much, if you're using, well, more Gamsol does not necessarily equal more blending. So to you, to do better blending, you may need to use a different brush or you may need to work longer, um, depending on how much of a tooth your paper has, like it can take longer to, to kind of blend it out. Um, so I think that is it on the Gamsol. Um, as always, if you have other questions, put them in the description box put them, nope, you can't do that, put them in the comments. And I will try to answer them in the next video in the series or in another video. Um, oh, and actually I'm just remembering a question that a number of people have asked me um, because apparently it's not possible to get Gamsol in every country. Um, I know there are other brands, so what it is essentially is an odorless mineral spirit. So you would look for that. Sometimes it's abbreviated OMS. Um, but I, I know the most about Gamsol versus other odor, odorless mineral spirits. I've really never used anything else because Gamsol is the safest. Um, so I would just say if you're going to use another one, absolutely be sure to open the windows and work in good ventilation. I guess the same that you would as if you were working with Gamsol, but just to maybe be a bit more careful. Um, all right, so the next kind of blending I want to mention is uh, the most straightforward and that's just the, using the pencils themselves to blend. If you're working on kind of a gradient like this uh, and you can see there's like pretty clear dividing lines between each pencil, you can, or between each color, you can choose what is, what looks like a mid-tone in between the two and kind of start layering that and feathering that out. Um, I'm going to add a little more dark actually over here. You can also uh, just go back in with the lighter of the two colors and sort of start feathering it. But you have to be careful actually, like right now I can, I can see that I'm creating some muddiness. So I'm gonna pick a different color to go in with. And yeah, you just kind of keep working it over and over and over. Now, if I went over this with Gamsol, I would get like a uh, really, really smooth, nice, um, transition from the dark to the light, but working just with the colored pencil is fine too, especially if you don't mind having a little bit more texture showing through. So uh, the final way to blend a wax-based or oil-based pencil is with some kind of a colorless blender. Now they do make pen versions of these, which I believe have some form of odorless mineral spirit in the pen. So you're kind of um, putting down the OMS and using the pen itself to blend. Um, but for what you pay for it, you would actually be much better off just buying some Gamsol in a brush because you're gonna get way more. Like this little jar that I'm using, I only fill that up maybe like once every 
I don't know, three or four months, I use hardly any. So I buy like a big jug of it and it just lasts years. So um, as opposed to the colorless blending pens, you would you go through those pretty quickly. But in addition to the pens, there are also um, colorless blending pencils. And this one, I've been doing the demonstration with Prismacolor pencils, but this is the, um, the excuse me, the Coranda Ash colorless blender. And as you can see, um, it is unused, and that's because I don't really like to use colorless blenders. I feel like you're just putting more wax on the paper, and for me, it has never really been a great option. Um, I did go through a phase where I really tried it, but uh, it just it just wasn't my thing. Um, however, I did want to mention it because it is an option, and some artists do use them. So um, I'm just adding a little more pigment right over here so I can show you how they work. This one isn't sharpened. Um, but I have the end of one that I broke right here that is. So what you would do essentially is just kind of go back over what you have already laid down. And you have to press pretty hard so you're burnishing it at the same time. And burnishing means you are, if the paper has little teeth, you're pushing the teeth down flat. So while you're blending it, you're also pushing the teeth down flat. And that's another reason I prefer using Gamsol to um, the colorless blender. Because with Gamsol, you can move the pigment around while still leaving the teeth up. So you are essentially, you're able to add as more pigment afterwards. And that's actually some, that's a sort of added benefit of Gamsol, I think, is that you can get more layers down than you could certainly if you were just using a colorless blender. Um, but I, I still wanted to mention it again, just because, um, other, it works for other people. Okay. So I think that is about it for this video. I hope it was helpful. I hope it made sense. There was a lot of information and I feel like I was really rambling, but I feel like that pretty much in every video. So I hope you all were able to get something out of it. And, um, as usual, please feel free to leave any questions in the comments. And, uh, if I haven't answered them already, I will do my best to answer them either there or in a future video. Um, yes. Oh, and also, did I mention this in my last video? But I have a frequently asked questions page on my website that has a ton of content uh, and it has links to videos like the exact spots where I answer specific questions. So uh, if you have asked me a question and I have recently <laughs> or like within the last couple months and I haven't answered it, it's probably because it's already answered on that uh, page. So. Um, I'm just going to keep saying that if you've been around for a while, you've already heard me say that before. Um, so sorry for repeating myself, but, um, please do check that out. If, uh, if you have a question that hasn't been answered, um, yes. And thank you for watching and please subscribe if you haven't and please like the video and, uh, keep an eye out for the next one, which should hopefully be coming up soon. And I might just even go ahead and record the next video today. So I would be wearing the same outfit. I hope that's okay. Uh, that is it. And I hope everybody has a great week. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.